Hello uh, and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webcast about musculoskeletal simulation in an automotive environment. My name is Amir. I'm with Anybody Technology. Uh, and today I have uh, Monkey Jung with me as a panelist. And I will give a webcast today about uh, musculoskeletal applications or different applications in an automotive environment. Uh, I will talk uh, a little bit or will try to introduce uh, who and what is anybody and then I will go into different sectors of automotive engineering. I will start a little bit with package design and go to ingress egress and then uh, show some applications with anybody regarding seat development and comfort and then I have a couple other um, applications as well and at the end uh, we will have a questions and answers session uh, that brings me to the point uh, whenever you have a question during my presentation please feel free to type in your question in, the, in this little question box which should be uh, which should be behind this orange arrow that you can see in your go to meeting window so please feel free type in your question in there uh, and uh, either Moki will try to answer the, the question uh, immediately or will postpone it and then I'll try to answer it at the end for everyone. Um, also, this webcast is being recorded and we're going to put it on our YouTube channel uh, within the next days. Uh, and also, we will make a handout of this presentation, so you will have access to a PDF version of this presentation. So, in case you will miss something, um, uh, there's always the chance to read about it again or to listen in the webcast about it. So, very briefly, who is Anybody? So, Anybody uh, is a company in Denmark, in all about Denmark, called, uh, that company is full name is Anybody Technology. It's a spin-off uh, company out of Albo University uh, where we still have tight connections to. We also have an uh, office uh, a little bit outside of Boston in the US and Anybody Technology develops the Anybody modeling system and provides licenses, training, support and consultant uh, projects with the, this Anybody modeling system. Um, anybody can be found in many different areas. So if you start at the bottom here, uh, you see anybody is used in the orthopedic or in the medical, biomedical area. Uh, on one hand for surgical planning, evaluation and failure analysis, either of surgeries or of implants. Then anybody can be used to compute physiological load cases for further finite element analysis if you want to analyze certain implants, for example, during daily activities. On the top left hand side here you see anybody can be used in a work environment uh, area or to design assistive devices for uh, tasks certain workers have every day, repetitive tasks or lifting heavy loads, for example. Then anybody can be used uh, in the in the process of designing or optimizing new products, products that are in direct connection with human beings. For example, this can be a wheelchair, as in this picture here, or it can also be bicycle, any form of, of implant, any form of device that's connected to the human being. Also, of course, uh, in an automotive area, where anybody is very often used also for ergonomics documentation or to analyze certain uh, postures or motions uh, in an automotive area. So uh, anybody does uh, musculoskeletal simulation, that means we use an activity, so basically motion as input. Uh, you can apply this motion then to this full body model that's available in the anybody modeling system, which contains of bones, joints, muscles and ligaments. And then you can compute for this activity, so for this motion, internal loads like muscle forces, activities, power, and then also in terms of uh, for the joints, you can compute joint forces and moments. This principle is called inverse dynamics. 
once again, it means input is motion, and if you have external forces available, if you don't have external forces, anybody is uh, capable of computing interaction forces with the environment. Um, the motion comes either from a recording, so if you have a motion capture system, either one with markers like Vicon, Qualysis, Simi, etc., or if you have certain suits like the Exons, Animazu, etc. Uh, if you don't have uh, recording available, it's also possible to define the motion by joint angle input, so you can can define how certain joints will uh, will move over time, so you can define the motion manually as well. Um, it will compute then for all muscles in the in the full body model, or if you analyze only, for example, the lower extremities, it will compute for all those muscles and joints in there the forces and the activation profile for the muscles and then the forces uh, for the muscles and forces and, and, jo uh, and moments for the, the joints. Uh, just to give you a little bit overview about the, the full body model, on the right hand side here you see a screenshot of the full model and also some details in there. Um, the full body model has more than 1200 muscle fascicles at the moment and uh, we currently, we're always continuously working on making it more detailed uh, and even better, this model. Uh, only, for example, lumbar spine took uh, three man years to develop in the, the detailed version that we have right now. Also, the foot model, this detailed foot model that we have is also more than three man years development to design or to develop this very detailed foot model. So, by default, the, this full body model represents uh, a standard average uh, European male, but it's very easy to adjust this, this, uh, this subject according to your needs. So, depending on what information you have available, you can uh, scale or morph this subject. So, you can use anthropometric scaling, like just uh, entering uh, height, weight, certain segment lengths of, uh, of thigh, shank, foot, etc. And then you can scale the model. If you have uh, motion capture recording, you can also use this as a dynamic or static scaling, so to recreate your subject. And if you have very detailed information available, like CT scans or MRI scans, you can also create a, a, a a matching subject or patient that you have. You can also do some population groups, like certain uh, uh, certain uh, gender, uh, elderly, more obese per, uh, persons. So depending on your on your own needs, what you want to analyze, you can you can basically create this model. So in general, um, a simulation looks like uh, you 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 load. Uh, a motion, so basically applications, uh, we call it very often activity of daily living. So you can load that uh, activity and then analyze in anybody uh, this activity and then compute muscle activations, forces, joint forces and moments. So that's what we call a standard workflow, but you can also do a more advanced workflow. So you can hook up uh, your motion, for example, with a CAD environment, so there's a, a SOLIDWORKS to anybody translator available, so if you have an environment, it can be like here in this, in this picture, a sports equipment, bicycle or elliptical trainer, it can also be uh, a seat or a chair or a full automotive environment. Uh, then, as mentioned before, you can use our standard uh, a human subject, or if you have CT scans available, we can make a subject-specific model, and then you can export everything into a finite element as well for further pr uh, processing of, if, you, if you're interested in stress and strain uh, in, in certain bones or in certain implants. There's, a, there's also a hook to advanced scripting languages, so you can uh, do other uh, computations in Python and hook that up to, to anybody or other optimization softwares. But I think that's now enough for general anybody, so now I want to move on for auto, uh, to show some automotive applications. So 
I will give an overview here in certain areas. I will start with package design and I have some examples from current users from uh, or from, from uh, some examples that we did ourselves here. And some of those, uh, or most of them, are based on some, some published data. And you will also always see the reference to this paper, and there's always a chance to read more uh, about uh, if, I'm, if I'm explaining something not uh, in, in much detail right now. Uh, and please feel free also afterwards, or now uh, ask a question. Um, uh, if you have have any, if anything is unclear, uh, please feel free to to ask us either now or afterwards uh, via email. So first, I want to start with a paper by Zhang et al. from 2009. This is a, a nice overview showing certain parameters that can be analyzed and also optimized using the anybody modeling system. On the left hand side, here you see a graph with several parameters in there. On the right side you see a screenshot uh, of the anybody environment or the anybody subject. So the anybody subject sitting in an automotive environment. Uh, and you see all those parameters like steering wheel diameter, steering wheel angle, so the tilt of the seat, uh, the, the distances between steering wheel, seats and the pedals, all those uh, values or these parameters can be optimized according to an objective function that you can define in anybody. So I have an example here uh, from a user case uh, within Ford, automotive uh, manufacturer. Uh, so they use anybody for certain um, developments. So in this study here, uh, they try to find the best position of the handbrake and also for the pedals uh, for the lowest muscle activation. And on the, on the left side here in this picture you see the subject pulling the handbrake. On the right picture here you see the subject pushing a pedal. And it was, uh, they tried to analyze acceleration and also the brake pedals. And the motions in here are very different. So if you imagine you're pulling a handbrake it's a very fast moving, you have a high muscle activation, it's usually the, the torque in there, so the resistance in the handbrake is relatively high. So they wanted to analyze where is the best position for that and also you could analyze uh, what is the best uh, resistance, so the, the torque generated by this lever that you pull in the handbrake. Um, on the other side here on the right side, if you, if you, uh, if you push a pedal, especially if it's the acceleration pedal, uh, that's a very uh, easy task, it should be a very easy task with low muscle activations, you do that very often when you drive and you have, it's a lo long term uh, process as well, so you push the pedal for, for a long time. So it's very different um, tasks uh, that are analyzed here uh, and I'm only going to show um, one of the, the results in there. So they looked here at uh, the clutch pedal optimization and here you see a 3D graph. So uh, on the left side here you see the max, the, the max muscle activity. So they were looking at the muscle activations and they were looking at two parameters. So the spring stiffness, so the resistance or, or what's uh, the, the stiffness of this clutch pedal. And on the other hand, the position uh, of the pedal compared to the, the seat, so the seat distance. And then you get one of those 3D graphs. Um, um, to uh, where you can see then how the muscle activation depends on all those on both of those uh, parameters here. So um, uh, they have looked at uh, a lot more uh, parameters. I'm not going to show all of them here. There's a paper available. You can find that also on our homepage on anybodytech.com. There's a full list of, of publications. And there's also um, a, a better description of the whole uh, experiment that they have done here, which is also a very nice uh, example of uh, how you can validate such simulations. So in here they have done a big uh, mock-up of, uh, of this car with subjects in there using handbrake and uh, pushing the pedals. 
they have recorded everything with motion analysis, so they had a quality system. They have recorded a lot of external loads with sensors on, on the seat, sensors on the pedals, also the, on the foot, on the heel, which is uh, on, on the ground usually, on, on the floor. Uh, they have recorded those motions and then they have also done EMG measurements uh, of the muscles. So they, they uh, measured how the muscles are active during the different tasks and then they have compared it with the muscles activations inside the or that anybody predicts. And here I have a couple graphs for you now. So this is for breaking uh, tasks so in the foot. So if you break uh, with your right leg basically you have vastus lateralis, a uh, major muscle in, in, the, in the leg, uh, active according as, uh, to this these lines here. So the red line is what anybody predicted how it should be active and the blue line you see how it's matching almost perfectly is the measured EMG uh, 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 activation profile. And the same can be seen here for Celeus, another uh, muscle in, in the lower extremities. For the handbrake, they have looked at the biceps and the deltoid medius. And you can see again that the profile looks very similar and the, the curves are matching very well in there. Another example, uh, something uh, very, very small and uh, gives a lot of information is uh, if you want to analyze certain tasks, basically you have a subject sitting on the seat and he wants to close or open uh, the door of the car and then you can uh, analyze different positions of the handle on the door and then look for example at the shoulder reaction forces. So the GH is the a glenohumeral reaction force in the shoulder. You can see how a little movement of this handle of 10 centimeters uh, creates a completely different load. Um, so we have almost 50 newton difference in, in certain areas uh, in, the, in the shoulder joint reaction forces. So this is a very uh, rough and crude example that we have made here. Uh, but I think that shows uh, very nice how uh, how certain parameters can influence the human or what's going on inside the human um, during, uh, during certain daily uh, activities like in an automotive area. So this is uh, roughly what I wanted to talk about in the area of package design. I will move on now to some examples in the, the area of ingress and egress. So um, uh, when we talk about automotive area applications, we always see a car or something, but it doesn't have to be a car all the time. You can also talk about trucks or some, some also agricultural machines. And for those uh, trucks, it's quite, it's quite often very complex to get into those vehicles. And there's a study from Read It All. You can also find the, the paper on, on our homepage where they built a big mock-up and had several subjects getting in and out of the car to analyze uh, the internal loads uh, during this activity. There's also, um, I have a link here for a, uh, for a newsletter from BMW uh, with some, some pictures of how they have a mock-up in, in their lab as well and they analyzed ingress and egress um, uh, in, uh, for certain cars. Um, there has been um, a webcast here for, for anybody from Rafael Bichler, uh, employee of BMW, it's a couple of years back, uh, where they have analyzed the ingress and egress of the, into the Z4 Roadster BMW see a screenshot, a screenshot of their analysis and very interesting also there's a, uh, an abstract from John Rasmussen for an orthopedic conference, so the ORS 2011 where they used this model and then looked into a more orthopedic uh, uh, question, so what happens if you get into a sports car like this and you have actually a, a hip uh, prosthesis, so you have a total hip replacement uh, and what happens in there? Is there a risk of impingement or is there a risk of, of any complications in, in there uh, when you go into a sports car? Uh, another study in, in the same area is, has been done by Evie Buchner. So uh, it was a master thesis uh, at 
Audi. So she looked at different seat types and compared the ingress uh, into an Audi TT. And um, you can see here on the pictures, they haven't used a traditional motion recording for that with markers and many cameras, but they used uh, an Xsense suit for, for, the, for the measurements. And that has been used then to make also several anybody models and then compare the internal loads, especially uh, knee, hip and, and spine uh, for the ingress egress into these uh, into the TT uh, or the TT with different seats in there. Um, if you wanna try and look or do such a simulation on your own. Uh, we have a model in, in our example uh, model repository um, that you will get with the anybody modeling system uh, looking at um, the ingress out of this SUV. Here you see a little animation out of this uh, uh, here on the left side. Uh, and uh, we, we did a little study, Rasmus and Tom did a little study a couple of years back where they analyzed different handles uh, to help to assist the, the egress motion and then they looked at the knee reaction forces of what's going on in the human knee. Uh, if you have different handle locations and the subject can uh, get support from a handle in, in different areas. You can see here on those graphs, it's just uh, with the different location uh, of this handle, you get a very different force profile in the, in the knee uh, according to where this position of the handle is. So this, is, uh, this model is available in the, in the AMMR, so the, the Anybody Managed Model Repository uh, in the example folder in there. So I will move on now uh, and leave uh, ingress egress behind and look a little bit into seat development and seat comfort. So first I want to show or mention a little study. I'm not going into detail there. You will find that also on our homepage again. Um, this is a study done by Ford and by Mark Dizé, a professor in, in he's a professor also in Auburn University. So he uh, developed, he analyzed with Ford their active motion seating system. Um, it's a special system that ensures that you have always a certain muscle activity while you're sitting uh, on this um, seat. And he helped develop uh, that system and to, uh, to optimize certain parameters like the frequency ratio and, and certain amplitudes in there uh, to ensure uh, optimal uh, muscle activation in there. So in anybody, uh, if you want to um, analyze uh, different postures, that's uh, it's fairly easy. So yes, you have different postures. So I made this little example yesterday evening. Um, and you see here two different postures. Uh, posture one, the, the upper one, uh, where you see a subject sitting a little bit more bent forward. While posture two, here the, the lower one, uh, the subject sits very upright in his position and then you can look at different values inside so what's going on inside the subject so anybody will predict here the the interaction force to the seat and the backrest and then will also compute what's going on inside the human subject and first of all i've here displayed the muscle envelope so this is the maximum muscle activity that appears uh, during the simulation, and we see for posture one, it's slightly lower compared to posture two. So posture one, uh, let's say posture two has uh, muscles with a higher activation uh, in this uh, to maintain this posture. If you look now at the loading of the lumbar spine for those two different subjects, so usually lumbar spine is the critical part, so everyone is looking at the lumbar spine. And we see there's actually a big difference between posture one and posture two. So posture one has a lot higher loads, especially if you look between in, in the lower areas or in the, in the sacrum pelvis area. So that would uh, show that this more upright position, posture two, uh, is, is better for um, uh, is, is a more comfortable um, posture in this area. 
So um, we can also move forward and then look, for example, at the, the cervical spine, and then we see here, so that would be in, in the upper area, so in the neck area, and we see that uh, posture 2 has here slightly higher uh, loads, however, that's, it's not, the difference is not that big uh, as compared to the, to the lumbar spine. So that means that there are higher loads in, in posture 2 in, in the neck area uh, to maintain this more upright posture. So um, uh, you can also ask now how do you get this posture uh, into the antibody modeling system and there are several options. Uh, you can also use uh, a different uh, mannequin for that and we have uh, we have worked quite hard over the, the past couple of years uh, to make anybody um, available to use or to exchange data with other digital human models. One of them is the uh, is the, the virtual seed solution from ESI, so where you can predict the age point position and also the seed and the human deformation. It's a FE, finite element based system, and they can export their data as an XML format and anybody can read that then and use to use to position the, the mannequin and then compute the muscle activations and the loads and the joints and forces uh, in, in using the antibody modeling system. Additionally, uh, there's uh, there are also uh, we are also involved in another project. This is a German uh, funded project. It's called Udasim. It's also to uh, enhance the data exchange of digital human models. And in there, the, the, the two other models, uh, one of them called Ramses and the other one Casimir, uh, are hooked up uh, with anybody to exchange data in there. So currently in this project we have managed uh, to find the proper file format to exchange uh, all the necessary data uh, so that those models can communicate with each other. And uh, currently, we are working with the Technical University of Munich together then to feed data from those three digital human models, so from Ramses, Casimir, and anybody, into a neural network. And in there, the, the neural, network, neural network will use the information to predict a global discomfort value. So really to tell at the end this configuration of seed uh, and seed parameters is comfortable for the subject or not. And uh, we are currently uh, working, as I mentioned before, with the TU Munich to train and validate through uh, physical experiment this neural network. Um, we have also done a project in the past with Casimir. So there's, a, there's also a paper on our homepage available uh, from Olesen at all. It's a PhD thesis containing several uh, papers in it. And here he hooked up the anybody uh, seated human uh, with the Casimir model to look uh, to compute especially shear forces uh, in, in anybody for different postures and different seat configurations. And then he looked at the at the deformation of the soft tissue in, in the Casimir abacus model and looking uh, the, the final goal there was to look at cell necrosis and pressure ulcers of subjects uh, mostly in a wheelchair in environment but I'm not going to into detail there you can find it also on our homepage. Um, uh, another solution is how to find the, the perfect posture or the, the real posture uh, to analyze it is uh, not to hook it up with a different software, but then to do everything in the anybody modeling system itself. And therefore, we have developed a, a seed model, uh, which is based on a principle called FDK, force dependent kinematics. So it's not like a typical multi-body dynamics software tool. It's not based on fixed uh, kinematics. In here, really, you can uh, use the the geometry of the seat and also the stiffness values, so the stiffness of the cushioning uh, of, of the seat in the backrest and in the seat. And you can use those, those uh, values then uh, to make an elastic seat in the antibody modeling system. 
You have also the options uh, of having a pedal and a steering wheel. Uh, you can position it. You can apply forces uh, to the pedal and also how the subject holds the steering wheel. And then you can, uh, on top of that, then define your driver or your passenger. So, so basically choose size, anthropometry, and also the individual muscle strength. And then you can compute on one side again what's going on inside the, the, the subject, so the muscle activation and the joint loads. Uh, but you can also uh, see how the subject is sinking in into the seat. So where is the H point? And basically the stiffness in the seat, then the full um, weight of the subject, but also the activation. So what's what's happening in in the in the subject uh, is is uh, considered for that simulation. And you can see, of uh, for example, also uh, if the subject breaks. So how will he react on an increasing pedal force? And there was a uh, there's an abstract available from Rasmussen et al. So he presented earlier this year at the Digital Human Mannequin Conference in Tokyo. How does the H point change if you have an increasing force uh, uh, from from breaking, for example? He could show that you're pushed further to the back, of course, and then also if you have very one-sided. So if you have a force only on your right leg, you will also have a, a slight rotation in, in the seat in there. And another study that I've presented actually last week in an automotive meeting is, um, so I've, I've uh, looked more detailed at the, at the loads in the foot. So if you're, if you're braking, uh, so I've done a little sensitivity analysis, so different forms of, of braking analyzed and then looked at what loads are actually in the midfoot area. Are those critical loads? Are, are we getting very high loads, or how are they compared to to other daily activities? Uh, and um, uh, I could conclude that uh, as long as it is not a really emergency braking, so for for normal activities, the loads are relatively uh, uh, normal compared to other daily activities. Only if you have a very lateral uh, uh, um, application of the load or on the toe tip itself, then you will get a very high force in the midfoot area. So uh, two values or two terms that are always mentioned uh, if you're talking about seat development and comfort, uh, it's uh, fatigue and the other one is, is comfort itself. And um, we have not implemented both uh, uh, of those um, uh, factors into the anybody modeling modeling system, mostly because those those uh, factors are very individual. So if uh, if if you or I, if we sit in a car, we will experience fatigue very different, and also we will usually, uh, I guess we will we will see the comfort level very different. So that's why we have not implemented that uh, as a standard function into the anybody modeling system. However, it can be implemented uh, for uh, individual tasks. So for example, um, Ford has implemented that. Uh, they have a fatigue model in there uh, and uh, also they have a certain comfort um, functions implemented in, into their uh, development process, however, more for certain tasks, so not in general, but then for a certain task itself. So fatigue can be modeled, for example, um, usually if you if you have a, f a fresh uh, muscle, it has a, a maximum strength, so a capacity what it's able to perform, and fatigue is then shown that this capacity um, decreases over time, so instead of using a, a fixed uh, maximum strength of the muscle, you can include uh, time depending uh, muscle um, maximum strength. So that's how you could implement uh, fatigue, for example. Um, and for comfort, uh, it depends, of course, in, in which area uh, you're looking for. So for example, if, if you want to see which handbrake is the most comfortable uh, position or the, the the torque in the handbrake, which is the best. 
or most comfortable, uh, then you have to, to inc uh, include certain areas of the human body and see what loads are, for example, in wrist, elbow and shoulder and how are the activations uh, in, in, in certain muscles that are responsible in there. And this has been done, it has also been published by, in, in a couple of papers. Uh, a recent study was there, a comf uh, comfort uh, level described by BMW for different ingress-egress uh, versions that they have also validated against um, uh, certain uh, experiments that they have done with subjects. So uh, I think that's enough now for ingress-egress. So I want to I'll go to, the, to my last area, which I named others. So in here, I just wanted to mention some areas what's also possible to do with the anybody modeling system. Uh, one of them is to look into acceleration. Uh, here we see a little example that has been uh, done by Julian Gru from Terabyte in Japan, and he has also uh, shown this in the previous webcast. It was done earlier this year, I think in April, May, maybe uh, this year. So he looked at accelerations on a on a uh, rider of a, a motorbike, but you can of course do the same in an in an automotive area. So here you see the muscle activations. So how are the muscles active uh, for uh, uh, acceleration from zero to one hundred in only a couple of seconds? So uh, there are some really nice Japanese motorbikes. So they they did a simulation on one of those. Uh, but of course, the same is possible uh, not just for a motorbike, but also for car, truck, trains, or some agricultural machines. Um, uh, then maybe also not just positive acceleration, but also the braking itself. You can look at how does a negative acceleration affect the car. And then a different area is also if you're driving uh, in a curve, so, so uh, you will have very one-sided forces. The acceleration in there is, is might be very high, and then you see uh, you can can compute how will the the muscles be active uh, to maintain your posture during driving around the curve. So this has been also simulated more in the, for amusement parks in, in in roller coasters, for example. But we have done it also more for space applications. So if you look at a centrifuge uh, for training. Of, of certain astronauts, for example. Um, this can be also done uh, for uh, analyzing vibration, damping, and certain speed bumps. So what we have done, we have analyzed different road types, for example. So you need the profile of the road and uh, displacement um, for, uh, for the seat or, or for your uh, uh, what, what's uh, for your for your design or the, the environment, and uh, so it's possible for certain uh, frequencies. Frequencies, uh, it's not possible if you go in very high frequencies. Uh, but for 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 uh, uh, certain frequencies, it's possible to do that, and we have done some very pro promising simulations in that area. So finally, I have uh, one more example, uh, and I just wanted to mention here, so very often if you think about automotive engineering, um, then we think about what's going on in, in the seat uh, of the driver, uh, maybe if you close the door or something. But a big area in automotive engineering is also work economics, because uh, you have workers that manufacture or that assemble the cars and assembly lines and that they have very difficult tasks so they need to lift heavy objects and have therefore a risk of overloading joints or muscles and they might get a uh, have a high risk of, of injuries due to muscle fatigue and, and very repetitive tasks so you can also analyze this with anybody so anybody has been used quite often to analyze certain tasks in assembly lines I'm not going into detail there uh, but I'm, I'm happy to say that we will have a a webcast soon, so I, I would say maybe uh, we haven't set a, a date yet, but early 2015 probably uh, we will have uh, someone from from Copenhagen. Uh, he didn't analyze assembly lines, uh, but something quite similar. So so work economics uh, on an airport. Pretty sure all of you. Uh, 
uh, flying quite often. So uh, when you check in your bag, someone really has to carry your bag and position it in the, the trunk of an airplane. So uh, Henrik uh, Koblauch from, from Copenhagen, he analyzed um, different airport baggage handler work environments and he will uh, give a webcast soon uh, about his, his findings looking at uh, loads in knees, spine and so on uh, during different tasks. Uh, also in that same area we have given a webcast previously more than uh, if you have those uh, those heavy lifting tasks or rep repetitive tasks uh, where you have then have exoskeletons or assistive de devices to help those tasks. So we have given a webcast also earlier this year showing that. So please go to our homepage, anybodytech.com, and you will find the recording and the PDF there, and you can have a look what's going on in there. So for now, uh, for this webcast, I'm, I'm at my uh, final slides. So as a conclusion, I hope I gave a, a nice overview of what's possible uh, with anybody in the automotive environment, automotive engineering. Uh, I've showed only some examples, so there's a lot more possible and there's a lot, has been a lot more done in the past, but I, I hope I gave a, a, a little overview of what's possible. So in package design you can optimize uh, several parameters to minimize loads and joints or muscles. If you look at ingress, egress, you can see what loads are, are happening during these uh, th these trials. For seed development, you can see uh, what muscle activations occur in different seeds or different postures, and also how uh, I hope I could show that so that th uh, there's a way to communicate or to have the interaction with other di digital human models in there, and also some some other. Uh, applications like uh, analyzing acceleration or looking into assembly lines and and uh, vibration in there. So we will have a, another webcast in three weeks from now on uh, November 13th. Uh, Valentin van Hoyle from KU Leuven and Materialize will talk about the prediction of in vivo kinematics of a knee. So we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, and then, um, um, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to contact us. Uh, you can go either to our main homepage of, of the company, anybodytech.com. You will also find a list of events where you can find us with dates. You will find this publication list there, uh, and also uh, um, the links to, to several recordings of this of these webcasts that I mentioned before. We have also a community homepage called anyscript.org with a wiki for technical questions and a forum for technical uh, posts as well. And then we have a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash anybodytech uh, with several help and demo demo videos and tips and tricks and also a list of many previous webcasts. So if I explain something very quick here and you have more questions, you can feel free to enter your question right now in the in the text box or to, to write to us, either to me directly. My email address is aa at anybodytech.com or if it's more general, you can also write to inquiry at anybodytech.com and it will be uh, delivered there to, to the right person if, if you want to send an email. Uh, 